Hello everyone and welcome to the Nuclear channel. This is a quick installation guide for Nuclear Kit on Sauron Light B. Here on the picture you can see the minimum tools required for this installation. If you haven't done this yet, remove your battery from the bike, open the cover, unplug two cables and extract the battery. For safety reasons we will need to discharge capacitors of the controller. Plug your key in and turn it. The lights may flicker for a second. That means capacitors are discharged. For quick disassembly I'm gonna use impact screwdriver. It is optional. First of all remove the ignition key cover. Unscrew two screws on top of it, we will need them later. And gently remove cover from the bike frame. Now we should remove stock Sauron display. It is not used. Under the display you can find two little screws. Use PH screwdriver to remove them. After that pull display away by wiggling it. Do not apply too much force. Follow the display cable. You may find little resin strap. Open the strap, remove the cable from it and put the strap back. Under ignition key you can find display connector. Unplug connector and remove the display. Now we can start removing stock controller. On top of it you can find a plastic cover and two screws. Remove them and the cover. Open the motor guard by unscrewing two top screws and loosening two bottom screws. You don't need to remove them completely. When you finish that, just pull the cover down. After that, remove two screws at the bottom of the controller. Two more screws on top of the controller. and two screws holding the plastic part. At the bottom of the controller use PH screwdriver to remove this plastic part completely from the controller. Now it is necessary to unscrew the front wall of the battery on the bike frame. Remove two screws on the both sides. Pull this cover. Now you have access to the connectors of the controller. Unplug these connectors. There are two big connectors and one little, going into controller. My wires were tangled, so it took me some time to untangle them and disconnect. Now you can unscrew face wires and battery wires. After that remove the controller. Remove two stock controller mounting adapters. They are not needed. Unscrew two screws on each adapter. Later we will mount nuclear adapter here. Grab your face wire extension kit. Install all face wire extensions on face cables coming from the motor. After putting all screws and nuts, I tightened them with impact screwdriver. You can use standard hex wrench for that. Now put on heat shrink tube. Screw should be approximately in the middle of it. For the next operation I recommend to use a heat gun set to 200 degrees Celsius. As an alternative you can use a lighter or another heat source. Just don't set your bike on fire. If you have dirty wires before shrinking the tubes I recommend cleaning them. Blow on the tube from every direction until it sits tight. Tubes have a glue layer. Proper shrinking will guarantee waterproof connection. If you don't feel the smoke, that's great. Now we can connect signal cables. Insert the connector and make sure it is latched. You need to connect only two sockets. Third little one is not used. It goes to the battery. Now let's put ignition key back. Gently insert ignition key. Make sure you have enough wire lengths left for the wheel turn. I say that because I totally didn't broke the front light cable. Use original two screws from ignition key panel. Here it's getting tricky. You need to locate the connectors in the top frame area and put back battery front wall. Be careful and avoid squishing cables. You can look in the screw hole to see if it's sitting correctly. After you correctly located the front wall, put screws back and tighten them.
Now let's move to a display installation. First of all, remove the top cap. To do that, you may also need to release the screws on the stem. Now you need display adapter package. You need to install the top cap adapter. I have used a metric screw for that. Tighten it. After that, tighten back stem screws. Let's assemble the display. For that, you need a CAN cable. Use a small connector to connect the display. Don't push it too hard, wiggle it. I used third slot to row display cable. Put the cable cover on. There are three short screws at the bottom and two long screws at the top of the display. Tighten all five screws of the display. You don't need to apply too much force to do that. Also, if you bolt some brake, you can connect it here too. Attach display to the adapter. Use screw provided with the package. Tighten it enough so the display stands firmly. Now you need to route CAN cable through the fork. I did put cable over the headlight, but you can hide it under. You can find a little clamp next to a horn holding cables. Unscrew that clamp. I recommend to use a long hex screw with round tip. Insert CAN cable into the clamp and screw it back. Let's get to adapter installation on the bike. I recommend putting wires behind adapter legs. Top right side of the adapter have special cut for wires and hydraulic line. Put adapter on the bike frame and lift it a little bit up. Make sure the wires fit correctly. You need two long screws without washers. Put them in the top holes of the adapter. Do not tighten screws at this moment. We'll do this later. Now you need two small screws with washers. They go to adapter legs. One screw on each leg. You need to install screw in the top hole on the bike frame. It is much easier to use a long hex wrench with a round tip here. Repeat the same operation on the other side. Do not tighten screws yet. Adapter should be a little bit loose. Pull all your wires through adapter hole. One thing to pay attention is wires on top. Avoid clamping wires with adapter around two top screws. Insert motor face cables too. Push adapter up. Now you need to lift motor guard and screw it. Put back two screws that you removed before. You can tighten all screws on the motor guard. Now tighten screws on the adapter. I use long hex screw for the bottom ones and short simple hex screw for the top screws. Time to install controller. Use only short hex wrench to screw phases. Because torque is limited to only 6 Nm here. Connect all three phases to the controller. I am gonna use the dynamic torque wrench. Set it to 6 Nm to tighten the screws. You may not have this wrench, that's why you should use only short hex wrench to tighten the screws. It will be hard to over tighten them. Connect signal cables. First of all, connect whole cable. This cable also have throttle signal. Connect it nearby. Connect CAN cable into CAN socket. And the last cable is inputs cable. Connected next to the CAN socket. Hide all wires under adapter. Before going further, I recommend to adhere a piece of cloth or a bubble bag to avoid damage to plastic adapter. Now you can put face wire cover on. Use two tiny screws and pH screwdriver to tighten them. And the final step is battery wires. 
it is a little bit trickier to connect them. Use same short hex range as with face wires. Align the wires when tightening screws to be able to install the cover. Same as before, I'm gonna use dynamometric torque range. It is optional, you can use just a short hex range. Install battery cover. All covers are optional and you can use controller without them. Same as before, use two little screws to attach the cover. After everything is connected, you can install controller in the adapter. Push battery wires down and slide controller inside the adapter. To fix controller inside adapter, use four short screws without washers. First of all, insert all four screws and only then tighten them. Do not apply too much force since it is a plastic part. Last important step in this installation is to remove the logo sticker. Without this, controller may work incorrectly. Congratulations, you may put your battery back in the bike and connect it. I will show you how to make basic setup of the controller. You should turn on your ignition key. Before going into setup, lift your rear bike wheel on the kickstand. Using display, navigate to devices, controller, after setup, and run full setup. Soron don't have an analog brake, so this step will show error. When it needed, press throttle, then release it. Motor detection will begin after that. Wait until it is finished. This setup uses a preloaded Soron configuration. If you don't have configuration preloaded on your controller, you can download this configuration from documentation website. Save this file to SD card and import it. After that you can run the full setup. After the angle correction finished, you can put your bike down on the ground. Controller will detect resistance and motor inductance. Motor setup finished. Go back and navigate to extra parameters menu. You need to set up disable button to switch. Controller configuration done. Now you need to go back and save parameters. Return back to set up battery capacitance. Go to onboard computer settings. Navigate to main screen setup and select battery capacity. Dependent on the battery type, input correct capacitance. If you have custom battery, you will also need to set up custom battery parameters in controller menu. Don't forget to save display settings. And we are done. Return back to the main screen and lift your kickstand. Now you can test your speed switch on the left side. If you press brakes, B icon will be shown on display. And turn your ignition key to turn off controller. Hit like if this guide helps you. If you have more questions, you can ask them in Telegram group or in chat on the website. All links in the description of the video. Bye!